Well, I think that any Appalachian writer would think of uh, James Steele's writing as really foundational. I mean, you can't, I don't think you can really understand Appalachian literature without knowing River of Earth, knowing James Steele's poetry. I know that reading James Steele's poetry um, hugely influenced my work. I, I wrote a whole novel in reaction to one of his poems. Um, and I think that he was one of the first writers to really give us an identity to really form what Appalachian literature is. So, I mean, he's one of the cornerstones. So we just can't uh, underestimate how important he is to our literature, you know, and I, I grew up hearing about James Steele. I knew he was just a couple of counties away from where I grew up, but I had never read him until I went to the Appalachian Writers Workshop. And once I was there, I was sort of shamed, you know, by by people <laughs> because I hadn't read it. Uh, I hadn't read his work. And so it just uh, kind of blew my mind wide open that, you know, those masterpieces had been written just a couple of counties away from me. I think reading him um, really gave me a sense of pride I hadn't had before about living in the region, being from the region. And so I think, you know, for any writer to be able to stay in the place where he spent so much time and uh, still contains his creative spirit is, you know, of great value. I've been lucky to stay at James Steele's cottage before. And, um, you know, just to know that such great work was composed there and to look out on the same views he looked out on and to walk that same walk down the mountainside that he walked down that little path and things like that um, made me a better writer. It made, it gave my writing more energy during that time I was there. So I think it'd be an incredible place for a writer to stay. Um, I think some of that creative energy still lives there, you know, and, and there's something about that place that informed him and, um, has had great value to our literature. I also think it's important to think about how James Steele is a great American writer and we shouldn't just call him a great Appalachian writer. And so I, I would really love to see people from all over the country know more about James Steele and to know that space and to visit the settlement school and see where he wrote. Um, I teach River of Earth every semester, so I teach it twice a year, and I read it twice a year, and i am never gotten sick of it. In fact, it gets better every time I read it. And um, it's a transformative book for my students. They, if they're from Appalachia, it teaches them they really have a history and a culture and a literature to be proud of. And if they're not from Appalachia, it really gives them historical and cultural context to understand the region and the people from the region in a way they've never had it before. So I've had, I've had several students who've ended up getting uh, quotes from James Steele's poetry tattooed on their bodies, you know, and things like that. There's just nothing better for me as a teacher uh, to see students be moved by a piece of work that's now well, it's 80 years old, you know, and it still resonates in a deep way. And that's just River of Earth. That's not even, I'm not even talking about his poetry and his short stories and um, his writing for children. So his body of work is just tremendous. And, um, and I love telling people that that all happened in a little town like Hindman. You know, people have this idea that masterpieces only get written in New York City or Los Angeles or, you know, something like that. And I think it's just uh, James Steele's story epitomizes that if you are a writer and you care about literature and you observe the world closely, it doesn't matter where you live or what you come from or, you know, who you come from, that you, you can produce really beautiful work. That's what he did. 
I think there are lots of ways to be a literary citizen. Um, and anybody who cares about literature should really strive to be a literary citizen, meaning somebody that really supports the arts. I think more and more we see the arts negated in our culture. We see them negated in budgets and things like that. And so I'm always looking for ways to be a literary citizen, to give back, you know, and there are ways to do that, like supporting your independent bookstore or uh, buying from writers, you know, actually buying their books instead of just uh, borrowing them from other people and things like that. And another way is to support efforts like this to preserve places where great writing has happened, to preserve the legacies of great writers like James Steele. And so I really feel a responsibility to be part of that literary citizenship. And I think a whole lot of people do. And so by supporting uh, the preservation of James Steele's cottage, I think that'd be a, a great way to do that. Mm -hmm.